So we've spent a couple days now adding our positive and our negative numbers together. Remember, our positives, our negatives, and zero are considered integers if they're whole numbers. Does not include your fractions and decimals. Those would be rational numbers. But integers are our whole numbers and their opposites, and zero. So we've been adding integers together. We talked about how they cancel each other out. If you combine negatives, you get more negatives. But today we're going to talk about subtracting integers, and we're going to start on a number line so we can visualize this. So for number one, it says, please draw and solve the math sentence negative 20 minus 20. So we talked about before, when you start a graph like this, you always start at zero. So you're going to put your first dotted line right at zero, and your first arrow goes from zero to your first number. So my first number is negative 20, so my first arrow goes from zero to negative 20. So if you were ever reading one of these graphs, you look at zero and you see where does that arrow go to, and now I know that's the first number that I'm starting with if I was going to write the number sentence. Now, when I'm minus 20, if you think about if I was at 70 and I'm minus 20, where would I go? I'd go down to 50. If I was at 50 and I'm minus 20, I'd go down to 30. If I was at 20 and I'm minus 20, I'd be down at zero. So it's going left. So if I'm minus 20, from negative 20, I'm going left 20 spots. And remember, you always want to draw your dotted line so that we can clearly see where that arrow is. And that's going to be at negative 40. So if we start at 20 below 0, and we decrease or subtract 20, now we're at negative 40. So the next one, please draw and solve the math sentence 30 minus negative 40. Okay, so we have a minus a negative. What's going to happen? So let's start at 0 and go up to 30. Draw your line. So I have to minus negative 40. So if I was minusing positive 40, I'd be going down because 100 minus 40 is 60 or 40 minus 40 is 0. So I subtracted a positive, it went down. Well, negatives are always opposites. So if I took regular 40 away, I'd be going down. But I'm taking negative 40 away. It has to go the opposite way, so it must go to the right, 40 spots. So from 30, I'm going 40 spots. So 10 to get to 40, 10 to get to 50, 10 to get to 60. That's 30 so far, so 40 gets me all the way up to 70. So notice what that looks like, because my final answer here is 70. So if I just told you you had a 30 and a 40 and you got a 70, you'd tell me, well, you added. But we actually subtracted, but we didn't subtract a positive, we subtracted a negative. So subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. 30 minus negative 40 gives the same answer as 30 plus 40. Okay, so minusing a negative is the opposite. Okay, it's the opposite. So now let's look at a real world kind of situation, put some context to this. So it says one town sits 30 feet below sea level, while the top of a hill in another city is 70 feet above sea level. Write and solve a subtraction problem to find the difference in elevations. So 30 below, think about how would I express that as a number? It's 30 below sea level. That would be negative 30. It's below sea level. And then this one is 70 feet above. That's a positive 70. Now, you could go ahead and start just throwing the numbers on there, but you need to be careful here. If I ask you the difference between my test grade and your test grade, and mine was a 95 and yours was a 90, and I said, what's the difference in the two grades? You would say 5. So technically, what did you do? You did 95 minus 90. You didn't do 90 minus 95, because then you'd say negative 5. And if I asked you, what's the difference between our tests, and you said negative 5, I'd look at you a little weird. So you always take the larger number minus the smaller when you're trying to find the difference, because we want a positive answer. We want to know what's the difference as a positive answer. So the larger of the two values here is 70. So we're going to start with 70. And we want to know how far is 70, or what's the difference between 70 and negative 30. 
Now we've talked about you don't need these parentheses. They're there just for organization. So the subtraction sign and the negative sign are clearly separated and they don't blend together. So technically you do not have to put those parentheses, but you should get used to seeing them and just know that it doesn't mean do anything special. It's just organizing that negative number. All right, so let's put this one on the number line. So you start at zero, you're going up to 70. And just like we did here, we're minusing a negative. So if I minus a positive, like I've done my whole life, if it was just 70 minus 30, I'd be going down. But I'm not doing 70 minus 30. I'm doing 70 minus negative 30. So it's the opposite. I have to go up 30 spots. So if I go up 30 spots from 70, I'm at 100. So you can think of this as temperature. If it was 70 degrees out and it went all the way down to negative 30 degrees, seems unreasonable. But if I asked you how far did the temperature drop, it dropped 100 degrees. Because from 70 down to 0 is 70. And then it went another 30 down. So if you put the 70 and the 30 together, it was a total of 100. OK, slide down to number 4. I want you to try this one. So I'm going to give you a second, but you can also pause the video if that's not going to be enough time for you. Pause the video, try it, and then come back on and see how you did. So before Johnny went to bed, the temperature was 27 degrees. The temperature dropped to negative 31 degrees. What's the difference between the starting temperature and the ending temperature? So we're going to subtract. When you want to find the difference between two numbers, the difference between my test and your test, we subtract. So we're going to subtract these two numbers. We want to start with the larger one, so we get a positive answer here. So 27 is the larger of the two numbers. It went all the way down to negative 31. So what's the difference between 27 and negative 31? We're going to subtract 27 minus 31. Let's do it in the picture. So starting at 0. Going up to 27. So now we don't have a clear 27 tick mark here, so it's going to be just a little short of 30. And at that point, it's probably good to label it because someone would look at that and they could interpret that as 26 or 28. So since it's clear, clearly not on a tick mark, we want to kind of label it. And now we're going to minus negative 31. So if I minus 31, it'd go down, but minus a negative 31, it actually goes up. So I'm going up 31 spots. So let's count by 10. If I went up 10, I'm at 37. Up another 10, I'm at 47. So I've gone up 20 so far. I've got to go up 31. So if I go up another 10, I'm at 57. So I've gone up 30 spots now. And then just one more. So I was at 57 and I went one more. So that would be 58. So 27 minus negative 31 is 58. So minusing a negative is like adding, because negatives are the opposite of what we're used to. OK, let's go ahead and let's flip this over. And we're going to go over our rules for subtracting integers. So we're not going to draw a graph every time we do one of these. We want to get some quick rules so that we can solve this just boom, boom, boom. And eventually, by the end of probably this month, you're going to be so quick with these, it's going to be second nature. Just like you add 3 plus 5, you're going to know what negative 3 minus 2 is. You're going to get it just as fast as you have your whole life with your basic stuff. So this is just going to take some practice. And so today we're going to talk about how can we speed this process up, not write it on a graph. What are the rules? So the rules for subtracting integers. This is what I like to call it. I like to say add the opposite. So instead of subtracting, add the opposite. All right, so we don't actually subtract. We change subtraction to addition. You can see this here. You're going to change subtraction to addition. Now you can't just change it because if it's 5 minus 3 and you just change it to addition and say 5 plus 3, you're going to get a different answer. We want to get the same answer. We just want to do addition instead of subtraction. So you can't just change it to addition. Something else has to change. So this will be very similar to KFC, keep flip change. This is basically the same thing except for adding and subtracting. 
So it's keep change change. You keep the first number. You're going to change subtraction to addition. But that's not enough. If you do that, you've now changed the answer. So we have to change the sign, the positive and the negative, of the second number. So instead of subtracting, you add the opposite. So if keep change change works for you, then that's what you should remember. I always just say add the opposite. So if you look at these examples, if I'm given negative 3 minus 4, I don't want to do subtraction with a negative. So I'm going to change this to addition. But if that's all I do, I'm going to get a different answer than I'm supposed to. So I can't just make this addition. So I have to add the opposite. So the second number, because it's keep the first, change to addition, change the second number. So this 4 has to change. So if this becomes a plus, the 4 must become a negative. It was a positive 4, it becomes a negative. So it changes to negative 3. Notice the first number never changed, plus negative 4. So instead of minus 4, it's plus negative. And then we know how to do that. Negatives plus negatives give me more negatives. So instead of subtracting 4, I'm going to add negative 4, add the opposite. So instead of subtracting 4, I'm adding negative 4 because it does the same thing. So 8 minus negative 6. <laughs> They're making an announcement. I'm just going to keep going here. So instead of minus negative 6, I'm going to add positive 6. So I leave the 8 alone. The subtraction becomes addition. And the negative becomes a positive. So the most important thing here is keep the first number the same. Change the sign of the second number when you change this to addition. So minus a negative is the same as plus a positive. And we know 8 plus 6 is 14. So the other way to handle this situation, when you see minus a negative, this becomes plus a positive. So you can actually physically make this a plus and make this a positive or a plus. So when I see minus a negative, I can just go plus plus. So negative 10 minus negative 10, I can go plus plus. And that's my new problem. And it may help to rewrite it so you can see it. So now it's negative 10 plus positive 10, which I have right here. Negative 10 plus positive 10, which is 0. So minusing a negative is really adding a positive. And then that's easy. So 5 minus 13, I'm going to change this to a plus. I'm going to change the 13 to a negative. And now it's an easy problem. It's just like the card game. You're adding a positive and a negative. They cancel each other out. And we've got negative 8. For this specific type of problem, I don't necessarily change it. So you can. It'll work. We just proved that it works. But I know that 13 minus 5 is 8. So if I switch this around, it's negative 8. So when I see a basic positive minus a positive, but I'm taking a large number from a small number, the first number that pops to your head, the 8, is actually the digit that you do want to use. Okay, But... I know a small number minus a large number puts me down into the negatives. So instead of positive 8, it's negative 8. So we'll look at some more of those down here. So we're going to do a couple of you tries, and then you're going to try a couple on your own as well. So when I see negative 11 minus 15, I don't want to do subtraction. So I'm going to change this. So it's very important that you keep the first number the same. Keep, change, change. Subtraction, I make addition. But again, if that's all I do, I have now changed the answer, and I don't want to change the answer. So if I change this, I have to change this. Okay, So it was positive 15. It becomes negative 15. All right, now I can do this problem. I'm adding two negatives. When you add negatives together, you just get more negatives. So this is going to be negative 26. You could also think about a number line. If I'm at negative 11, and I go down 15 on the number line, down, 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 farther into the negatives, I'll end up at negative 26. So the next one, 13 minus negative 9. When I see minus a negative right away, my first thought is to go plus, plus. Minus a negative is plus, plus, because you keep, change, change. So I keep the 13, I change subtraction to addition, and now this negative 9 becomes a positive 9. So this is simple addition, two positives. So 13 minus negative 9 is the same as 13 minus plus 9. And so that's just going to be 22. So the next one, I see minus the negative. It's going to be the same thing. I'm going to go plus plus. So let's rewrite it. Negative 1. 
keep, change, subtraction to addition, change a negative to a positive. Negative 1 plus 5. So this negative cancels one of these out, and it's positive 4. All right, one more. 1 minus 9. Now, I know 9 minus 1 is 8. So 1 minus 9 is negative 8. It's that easy. But let's use the keep change change and get this done in a different way. So keep the 1, change subtraction to addition, change positive 9 to negative 9. Think about your cards. If you have a positive 1 and a negative 9, you have more negatives than positives. How many more? 8. So it's negative 8. All right, so you can think about it two different ways. As long as you're getting the right answer, it really doesn't matter. So I want you to try these last three on your own. I don't just want an answer. I want to see the change, see the change, see the change, and then show me an answer. And once you think you have that, you'll be all set.